All right, I got my notes so I can stay on task. This is a Concerta update video. Please excuse my voice. I'm getting over bronchitis. <clears throat> hey everybody, thank you so much for all of the views on my first day on Concerta video. I really appreciate everybody who left a comment and shared a little bit of your story with me. I am extremely touched that you all have been able to get something out of me sharing my personal story. A lot of you have been asking for updates and in true neurodivergent fashion, it is taking me a year to give you one. I'm gonna answer some questions that I see you guys have been asking me in the comment. I will be posting a separate video on my learning disability. Also, if you have more questions that I didn't touch on in this video, Video, you can go ahead and drop them in the comment section of this video and later on I might do like a quick Q&A um, on my story on my Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram it's the same as my YouTube handle um, check me out there I like to do like fashion stuff and hair stuff and I also post a lot of my artwork there all right so here we go question number one does the medication still work for me so I started Concerta last year in January I would say it worked pretty well for me up to maybe about the fall of last year. I was only on, I think I started off on 18, excuse me, and I talked to my physician and we discussed moving up one dosage. So I moved from 18 to 26. When I went up in dosage, I did have some strange side effects. I had to deal with like the loss of appetite and the nausea all over again. But also what was really strange was I was having extremely vivid dreams, almost to the point where I didn't feel like I was getting rest while I was asleep. And I was about ready to stop taking the medication. I talked to my doctor. She thought that those symptoms were strange because vivid dreams is actually um, a result of withdrawal. So I don't know, but I think medication affects people differently. So whatever. Um, so I went up in dosage and I feel like going up in dosage did work. Um, I think we all kind of know that when you're taking a stimulant medication, um, sometimes your body gets used to it or whatever and, it, and the effects are, it's not as strong and it doesn't affect you as strongly as it did in the beginning, um, which happened with me. But what I did, I guess, to kind of combat that, I don't take my meds every day. And then there were some times throughout the year where I wasn't taking it for like a week or two, like when I was going on vacation or um, just recently, I didn't take meds for about almost three weeks. I just started back a week ago, and that's because my insurance changed because I transitioned to part-time with my job. And so instead of taking the name brand Concerta, I'm actually taking the generic brand. Woo! Question number two, how do I deal with the nausea? So I don't really feel the nausea as much now. What I do experience is loss of appetite, so I try to make sure I eat before the medication really like takes effect, but throughout the day, like I I don't really eat much unless it's fruit or I'll make sure I have a smoothie or something, but I'm not really eating heavy. I don't have an appetite really until like five-ish, six-ish, and then I'm ravenous. But before, when I was dealing, you know, having the nausea towards the beginning, I would say when the effects were pretty strong, I would just make sure I ate before I took the meds or like right after I took the pill. Do I take it every day? No, I don't take it every day. Most times I don't take it on the weekend unless I have a lot of like office work I feel like I need to do for myself. So I work for myself as a full-time artist, graphic designer, and I have several other businesses, a jewelry and houseware business, things that are more hands-on. So if I'm doing an event, I don't feel like I need to take my meds because I'm talking to people, I'm doing hands-on things. Those are things that I kind of do naturally and I enjoy more versus sitting at a computer, answering emails, filling out my calendar, writing out the list for my day, sending invoices, that kind of stuff, I'll take meds for. So my job, I actually transitioned to part-time with them um, and I'm transition trans transitioning to just be a, a graphic designer with them, which is, better for me. I won't be doing all of the marketing things that, uh, and all of the writing stuff, all that stuff that with my other businesses and things like that, it just was too demanding, I think for me and my condition and everything. Do I recommend Concerta? I recommend whatever your doctor recommends for you. Everyone reacts to medication differently. 
Uh, my sister, I don't know if I mentioned in the last video, but my little sister, after I went ahead and started getting diagnosed and doing the medication and seeing a doctor regularly about that stuff, my sister actually, um, my mom thought it'd be great for my sister to go ahead and get tested. So anyway, yes, she has ADHD and the doctor re recommended, you know, medication and they told her, or the doctor, I don't know who, they told the doctor that I take Concerta, so the doctor was like, oh, well, it'll probably work for her too. Long story short, she was having more severe side effects than me and so just recently they switched her medication to something else. So. It's really what works for you, what side effects you feel like you're able to bear, but talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I am not liable. You go talk to your doctor. Do what's best for you. Alex is doing what's best for her. Concerta side effects for me now, or you know the generic brand now, I would say um, something I noticed that was pretty strange. When I first started taking it was, I one day I went to go do yoga and it, it's like an intense whatever yoga and they heat the room or something like that. I don't remember exactly the conditions because it was like all the way last year. But when I got home after doing yoga, I got, I felt like I was about to pass out um, because I take my medication in the morning. My yoga class was about 30 minutes after I took my meds. And so when I got home, I, I think I almost passed out. I got like really lightheaded and I had to hold something to steady myself and I really felt like I was just about to just lights out. Um, so I had to sit down for a minute. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's high blood pressure or whatever. Um, my doctor now has me monitoring my blood pressure with the, with Concerta, monitoring them. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, I did take my medication this morning because I have a busy day. So I'm trying to film this video and give it to y'all in the middle of my busy day. So that, I don't know if that's something anyone else has experienced, but that was something that I experienced. It kind of scared me a little bit, but then I hadn't had an experience like that again. So I don't know if that was just at the beginning, but let me go back to my list. So side effects that I'm experiencing now after a year of taking the medication, really weird. I get these random bruises. And so like, I'm kind of clumsy. I bump into things a lot, but it's like the bruise goes to 10. Like two days ago I found, um, a bruise about the size of a dime and it was purple on my leg. And I was like, where did that come from? I don't even know where they're coming from most of the time. So I realized that I'm bruising fairly easily um, off of Concerta, more easily than I was before I started taking it. Vis vivid dreams. I've noticed the vivid dreams more if I take a break from the meds and then I start taking them again. That's when I get vivid dreams and it's frustrating because I don't feel like I'm getting any rest but it doesn't happen so much that I'm like, I can't take it all together. I think last year around the fall, that was when it was pretty bad when I went up in my dosage. And then just recently when I started taking it again after not taking it for about three weeks. Loss of appetite, y'all have heard me talk about that plenty. It's not as frustrating for me cause I, it's just not, it's not something that bothers me too much. And so like, if I have a plate of food that I'd normally eat sometimes during the day when I'm on meds, it takes me forever to eat it. Cause I'm just like, I feel like I'm going through the motions and I love to eat. So it's like, I'm just trying to put food in my belly at this point. But then around the end of the day, when it starts to wear off, I'm like Tyrannosaurus Rex, just like, Blood pressure, I said stuff about blood pressure earlier. Currently my doctor has me monitoring it every once in a while and um, I don't have any answers about it because I have not been doing a good job of monitoring my blood pressure. And then one other strange thing that I noticed was that if I get a cut, it takes a little bit longer than usual for the blood to clot in that cut. And that's just for me, that, that's what I'm noticing with me, myself, and I. I don't know if that's something everybody experiences, but I remember one day I was shaving and I accidentally nicked my knee and caused a cut and it was bleeding. And then I was rushing to get ready to go somewhere and my leg was still bleeding and still bleeding. And so like several times I'd press tissue on it to help it clot. And when I removed the tissue, I'm thinking, okay, we're good. And then it start bleeding again. So don't worry about me. I'm gonna talk to it, talk about it with my doctor. I don't want you guys to tell me anything scary in the comments, please. Okay, how do you get tested for ADHD? There are some online evaluations you can go do if you don't wanna go see a doctor or if you can't afford to go see a doctor, if you don't have health care. Um, I did that for a minute while I was in college. I would be like, oh, do I, do I? And then 
it'd be like, you do. And eventually I went to go see a professional and the way that they test you, uh, they'll give you an IQ test. There's several different kinds of tests they can give you that some are just like different types of tests. Others are testing for specific things. And so when I got tested for ADHD, they were also t not just testing my IQ, but they were testing my attention and focus abilities and things as well with different tests. Now, when in regards to my learning disability, which I'll get into more detail in a different video, they redid the IQ test, but there was also like additional testing that were testing for specific things as well. And I'll tell you guys the name of the test and everything like that in the learning disability video. Just keep an eye out for that whenever I decide to post it. And these are my notes from here. How have I been coping with ADHD? So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but these are the things that I've done that have worked for me. Changing my environment, or you might have heard this somewhere like making your environment ADHD friendly. The way I did that was number one, my job. I didn't tell you guys in the first video, but when I said that I was having difficulties at work and with lockdown and working from home, I it was it was very difficult for me. It was so difficult, I almost got fired. I almost got fired. That's how bad it was. And I, I, I remember reading some of the comments in that video and someone else, you know, experiencing adult ADHD has had difficulties with that as well. Like they, it's hard for them to keep down a job. My job required me to be sitting at my desk for hours at a time, planning out calendars, writing articles, doing a lot of research, being able to follow up with, you know, on lots of different emails, on so many different types of things. And not only that, like I was the marketing person, graphic designer, social media person. And those are like, kind of like three separate jobs within themselves. So trying to keep up with all of that, I wasn't doing a good job of it. Um, and I wasn't on medication at the time and I almost got fired. So as of last year, towards the middle of last year, probably in the fall is when the transition took place. I, I my businesses, outside of my job were starting to demand more of my time. And I started to realize like, you know, I need to invest more time in my businesses and my passions um, because I feel like if I invest that time, that money will come back to me. You know, it's, it's my, I mean, I work for myself now, but it's always been my goal to work for myself. So I approached my, my you know, my boss and we, I kind of wrote out a proposal um, about me transitioning my job description or my duties to just graphic design. Um, and my job is a very supportive place. Like when I say I almost got fired, it, weren't like, it wasn't like they were gonna just boot me out the door and that was gonna be it. But it started with conversations about like, you know, Alex, what's going on? Why isn't this working for you? And that was one of the things that really prompted me and encouraged me to go um, seek uh, more help with my ADHD and my boss was very encouraging about um, you know doing what was best for me and taking medication and like it's he said you know people need extra help and that's okay and so changing my environment so basically we worked out a situation where we'll be transitioning me out of those other um, responsibilities for my job and I'll be moving to part-time with them so I only work three days a week for them and I work every day a week for myself basically and that's one of the ways I change my environment to better work for myself I also hired a, a personal assistant that helps me with my businesses um, has access to my emails um, as well as some of the other programs I use for my businesses and manages my calendar and so when I have different conversations about different things about events and stuff with other people I screenshot it and send it to her she gets it on my calendar and she constantly reminds me of things and um, lets me know at the beginning of the day what I have going on for the day. And so that those are things that I've done to help me change my environment, change my job, inform my friends and family. All my friends, all my family, my my partner, I'll tell y'all about that later. But everyone knows about my diagnosis, sees and and how I cope and that I'm on medication. And it's, you know, you sometimes feel like, oh, it's all in my head my mental disability, oh, I'm kind of, I'm making it up. But one thing that's kind of confirmed that for me is my friends and family can tell if I took my medication this morning or not. And it's funny because it's like, you didn't take your medicine today, did you? It's, it's so obvious and um, we kind of joke about it, but I feel like that kind of gives 
them grace and understanding with me and it helps me to be a little bit less hard on myself when you know and, and they don't get offended if i like forget something when before i'd be like oh she's so inconsiderate that's probably a part of it but also like i'm just forgetful i think being inconsiderate and kind of getting stuck in your own head is a part of adhd and you have to consciously like make decisions and remind yourself and be really proactive about like hey let me think about this for a second you know, anyway that's a whole nother conversation i'm getting too deep into that i don't want this video to be so long and i'm, I'm a blabbermouth like just yesterday i was in line at michael's buying stuff and i told the, the cashier at the counter that i have adhd because i was like a hot mess trying to pull out stuff and and put things it was just a mess and i was taking forever and then i kept leaving the counter to go get more things and um I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a mess. I have ADHD and I, take, I didn't take my meds. I did not take my meds yesterday. And she was like, and then she ended up saying like, oh, I have it too, so I get it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So sharing with other people, I don't know. It's, I don't mind sharing. I think it makes us feel a little bit less alone in the world. And I feel like I'm talking too much again. So let me get back to my list. And the last thing is having grace with myself. Um, just accepting that I have this, mental do, are we calling it a disorder or disability mental disorder whatever um and a learning disability i have to consciously make the decision to have grace with myself over and over and over and every day because before when i didn't really accept it or before when i didn't know about it i would be so hard on myself all the time um be really frustrated with myself and that took a toll on my self-esteem and my confidence um, and that's getting too much into another question, so I'll move on. Do I recommend taking medication? Some people have found ways to cope without medication. That is definitely possible. Um, but I recommend you figuring out what is best for you. If you want to try it, I was really scared to take meds, but then I was like, I'm a grown up. I need to be able to work and make money. So until I can work for myself completely, I'm going to do what I have to do. That was my decision because coping without meds for my job wasn't working for me. And, you know, maybe if I had taken medication in school before I might've graduated earlier or something like that so i did what was best for me i think you should do what's best for you there are definitely ways to cope there's lots of resources on youtube and resources and you could even talk to your doctor about ways to cope changing your environment is definitely one of those things so yeah how do i deal with feelings of inadequacy due to my adhd and learning disability and also dealing with depression I think in the first video I talked about how hard and difficult school was for me. I don't know if I really got into how stupid it made me feel. Like I just felt dumb. And the thing about that is I'd always been elementary up to high school, been in gifted classes, AP, things like that. I'm, you know, like I think above average, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you know, I'm smart, I'm smart, but my grades were not reflecting that. School was really difficult. I did, you know, go through some depression and I had a lot of, I guess maybe pressure I put on myself to be good at school. I was be good at everything, to be honest. And the small, each small little mistake would build up on top of each other and it blow up into panic attacks or anxiety attacks before tests and you know, during class or while I'm doing homework. And it was just, it was just bad. So how did I deal with all of that? Um, I think the medication helped a lot because it got me out of my head. Like it let me see, it helped me to realize and understand like this is not your fault. And what you're going through is real. And not only that, but you've been trying harder than everybody else this whole time. Not that you're not smart enough or that you're lazy or you're not trying hard enough, but that you've been trying harder than everyone else. and. You know, you just need either extra help or accommodations or that boost. But um, the medication helped me to like see like, oh, I was not faking this entire time or, oh, like this is really a hindrance to me, I guess, being completely fulfilled or living, you know, my life as an adult or whatever. Like this is truly an obstacle. Um, so I guess accepting that um, earlier I spoke about grace, having grace with myself and um you know, maybe changing your environment. So 
me dealing with that. Also, don't focus so much on the negative things that you're not able to do and that you're not good at because people with ADHD tend to be creative or have something that they're really, really good at. We tend to get passionate about things or have these hobbies or whatever. Focus on the things that you're good at because those things matter just as much as what we feel like we're supposed to be good at. Personality changes. I would say the, so in the first video, you guys saw me kind of mellow out and people were like, she's talking so slow. I usually don't talk that slow. Usually, especially off meds, my, my sentence structure is more like several fragmented sentences thrown together. I would say over the past year, like after the first couple of months of me taking meds, it evened out. Like I wasn't all like, blah, 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 you know, you know, whatever. So people who are concerned about personality changes for me, I get all the good effects of being able to focus and stuff, but I'm not like a robot. And that's for me, that is for me. So Gussie works for you. Some things I found to be helpful with taking my medication, working out. Yeah, another side effect that I didn't mention was like, sometimes I don't get sleepy at night and I'll, I'll be up sporadically and I would have to like play um, water sounds or something, some kind of sound to help me fall asleep. Working out definitely helped me get tired enough so you know by the end of the day I'm ready to go to bed. And planning my day at the beginning of the day. I use this app called To Do List. It's great because it's like a checklist. It's like sticky notes that you can crumple up and throw away, but you just, you click a check by and it disappears and you get the same satisfaction. Learning disability video. I tur touched, turched. I touched a lot on my learning disability stuff in this video, but I literally have a whole video if y'all even wanna watch the whole thing on that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe, turn on the notification bell, give me a like, leave a comment if there is anything that I said today today in the video that you know you could relate to any question that you might have that i didn't get to go ahead and leave it in the comments i um you guys have overwhelmed me with the views and the comments thank you but even though i haven't replied to all of them this is a lot um i've read all of them and so i just want to let y'all know that i feel very honored that you guys are sharing your stories with me um, and feel you know comfortable to share your stories with me and i just hope that you know me sharing you know continues to help y'all and help you feel a little bit less alone if you don't already follow me on instagram go ahead and follow me it's m-o-r-o-w-a-m-o-s-a-i on instagram and um yeah i think i said all the things so thank you and toodles